So today we're talking about this lens. This is a lens I never thought I would be reviewing, but this is the Lens Baby Soul 45. And Annalise here is going to be helping me talk about it today. Hello. Annalise is a portrait photographer. She does lots of like women-centered photography, boudoir and maternity and babies and portrait sessions. She does lots of portrait type work. I'm having her help me talk about this lens today because it really lends itself well to that type of photography. So first of all, let's take a look at the lens itself. This is a very simple, small lens. It's almost a pancake type design. If you've never used a lens baby style lens before, essentially you end up with a, a circle of sharpness in the center of your frame with some very out of focus areas around the outside. And then you can bend the lens and move that center of sharpness around the, to the sides of your frame. And it has a really interesting feature where you can move these two little... God damn it! <laughs> Damn the public transportation. So I found the build quality of this lens to be surprisingly well made. All metal to construction. It's very, very small. It's very lightweight. It's kind of a pancake style lens. And when you throw this on a smaller body, uh, it really makes for a very small light setup. Another unique feature of this lens is that on the inside, it has these two little flaps that you can close and it drastically changes the way that the bokeh looks in the background of your frame. Very interesting. It's my favorite go-to lens when I want to try something different. For example, I had an engagement shoot and the couple was in the middle of this gorgeous green wheat, build, wheat field before I had turned all, you know, wheat colored. Took it like this and then I added these little flappy doohickey thingies and focused on them and they were mostly in focus because this is a manual focus lens. Dun, dun, dun. You have to use your eyes, which is its own thing, whatever. It just made this beautiful photo and it felt like it had movement. So my couple was on the right bottom third and everything was like whooshing towards them. And it looked like, at the risk of sounding like a hippie, like a different plane of existence. It was just creative <laughs> and gorgeous. A, that's a little different plane of existence. So she's been shooting with this a lot at portrait style shoots. I have actually only had an opportunity to shoot it uh, doing landscape photography. So I just got done with my Palouse workshops and the thing about shooting the same place over and over and over and over again is that you get burnout and you're not inspired or motivated um, by the area. So what this allowed me to do is do, to do something completely different and completely out of, out of the norm for me. And by not. I also brought this with me to a product shoot that I did um, for a local restaurant and took some pictures of cocktails. And um, you'll see the photo sometime during this video. But if you notice, I put these two little wings, I don't know what they're called, flappy thingies, down over the lens. It created some really cool bokeh. Yeah. Like it was almost the lines that went in front of the lens created little stripe thingies over the bokeh in the background. It was absolutely gorgeous and so different. Yeah, the bokeh that is created when you lower those bokeh flap things, we'll call them. I think that's the technical <laughs> term. Uh, it creates a completely different look. And it's, a, it's kind of, Jesus. We could almost make an entire video of us being frustrated at traffic. Yeah, yeah, the traffic's pretty ridiculous right here. It, it makes the bokeh have this kind of, it. well the bokeh takes on the shape of whatever you place in front of the lens and in this case you can get very creative with these two flaps and change the look of your bokeh. Displaying some of the images that we've taken with this lens here and if you're on the fence about picking up one of these, really for the cost of the lens, It's, it's such a interesting lens in the way that it can kind of take you out of a creative funk. Rather than focusing on like creating super technical photographs, you're, you're more worried about the creative aspect because you, you're not going to be creating a technically perfect sharp from edge to edge photograph. You're going to be creating something a little bit more abstract and a little less technical. And for somebody like me that's a very technical photographer, I found that to be pretty refreshing. So here's some of the images that we got with it, and it's a pretty cool lens. Thank you to Lens Baby for sending this out to us. I really, really like it. I do have one thing to say that I'm not 
a huge, can I talk about yeah, something let's I talk, don't like? We've talked about some of the pros. What are some of the cons? Because it's manual focus, I really, I don't really have 20-20 vision. So I'll think that I have nailed focus in camera. I look on the back of my LCD screen and it's like, oh, that looks sharp. Good job, Annalise, you know, pat yourself on the back. Then I get to the computer and it's out of focus. I mean, it's okay because it's a creative photo anyway. So that's like not really a big deal. Um, but with his camera, it has these little, I don't even know what they're called. It's focus peaking. So Annalise was shooting with it on her Canon 5D Mark III and her Canon 6D. And the problem with a manual focus lens on a DSLR is that you don't have the benefit of focus peaking. But since I've been shooting with Sony cameras, it's kind of rejuvenated this lens for me because focus peaking with a manual focus lens is so much easier. And I'm shocked that she was able to get as sharp of shots as she was able to when I was shooting with my Canon 5D Mark IV because this is the Canon mount lens, I was shooting on a tripod and I would zoom in and check focus. One of the things that we haven't touched on yet with this lens is that it is locked in at f3.5. So you're not going to be stopping down for extra sharpness or anything with this lens. It's locked in at f3.5. So the question is, who is this lens for? It's I... for me. <laughs> yeah, it's she loved me. it. I don't know that I found tons of use for it in my personal, you know, workflow because for landscape photography, I don't know, it's, it's nice to take me out of a creative funk, but it's not something that's gonna be in my bag all the time. Having said that though, it is such a small light lens that it's really easy to just throw in the bag just in case you want to take a more creative style photo. So it's, it's a great creative tool, it's a great creative lens, it's nice for getting yourself out of a creative funk. And clients like it or I have noticed my clients like it. Your clients may be different, but they like having something different that nobody else has. My average client is the one that wants to do things a little differently and more genuine. And I think that by adding that to my bag and never letting you use it again, and just keeping it with me forever, that's the best way to go. So yeah, really cool lens, really great build, and really a great price. So it's a fun lens to shoot with. Thank you, Lens Baby, for sending this out. And if you're in the market for this lens, hopefully this video has helped.